Welcome to Driving to the Res with Elia and Larry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so we have a really interesting conversation for you today. Um, we're thinking about talking about, do you remember what it was? Well, we're talking about a couple of things, censorship and the right to be able to get information and the right and ability to discern what information you're getting, whether it's, uh, you know, good for you or it's not good for you. If it's true, true for you or true for somebody else, I mean, is it dangerous for you to know some things? Is it dangerous for you to be exposed to things that maybe aren't true? I mean, this uh, seems to be what's happening in our world right now. There's information that's dangerous to spread because it's dangerous to have information that conflicts a story, I guess. Yeah, when I think about that, it feels like people are being treated like children, like toddlers. Yeah, I think that's right. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And it's not just about the information, it's about everything you can do or shouldn't do and in recruiting each other to enforce that through shaming, through bullying, through, um, I guess, putting up these walls so I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say. I know. And I respect that. I respect people who have different opinions than I do. And they will say, hey, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Right, and they'll unsubscribe from my newsletter or they will unsubscribe from my Facebook page or whatever. I understand that. I do it myself, you know. If somebody goes off and into certain saying things that I don't agree with and I know for that for me are wrong, I unsubscribe. And that's an adult behaving as an adult. But what were they doing right now in social media like YouTube, Facebook Twitter. Twitter, Instagram, and all these other, you know, even the me me mass media, um, they're trying to, well, the yeah. private companies, they're actually censoring anybody who will challenge the COVID thing that the governments are saying around the planet, not even the governments, the World That's, Health Organization, yeah. which is a private company, you know, even... So all these companies are censoring, 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 not allowing individuals to see other options or other data or views because they're being treated like children. No, you may not listen to that. You have to listen to this only because that other thing, that's dangerous for you. So no government, no person on the planet, I don't care who they are, has a right to tell me what I can listen to or tell me that something out there that somebody's saying is dangerous. Words are not dangerous. Information, we're all adults. We can go out and check it out. We can truth it. Right? Exactly. We can truth it. But they say they're a private company and you agreed to their rules when you signed on to use their um, software. And even though now they're practically ubiquitous and practically a, what would you call it, um, a major primary source of information for most people. In other words, they've gotten so large, everyone looks to them for a place to find information. They still submit that they're a private company and they can say what they want, and they can do what they want, and they're not, you know, restricted to requiring themselves to share anything that you want to share, even if it's legal, legal information, it's it's understandable if it's um, obscene, lewd, crude, or dangerous for minors, or, you know, some of the nasty stuff that is illegal if you get caught doing that. I mean, you're going to prison. They should, by rights, not be sharing that and having that spread around. But basic information and different opinions and, uh, you know inquiry into theory and sharing of scientific data, those things can't and so it shouldn't be restricted and it should be actually illegal for a private company to restrict that. That would be my position. But even with the legality and non-legality, 
for anybody, a company, a government or anybody saying it's illegal to say that you must boost your immune system or take vitamin <laughs> C, okay? I mean, that's ridiculous. Why wouldn't you say boost your immune system? Why would you want to make that illegal to say it? Why would your YouTubes and your Facebook pages be blocked? Because you said, hey, good dudes and dudettes, you know, uh, you really need to boost your immune systems and take some vitamin C. Why would they do that? I mean, that's totally ridiculous. And it's treating people like children. Well, it's treating them like bad children who they don't want to be well, in my opinion, of course. Maybe like they, are, they have some skin in the game and making people sick. Or have some skin in the game and making people follow the, um, the plan. The script. <laughs> the script. <laughs> Maybe there's a script and they're a part of it. I guess if they're part of a script that they want to bring about, then that makes sense why they'd want to, you know, restrict what information you can get. Because it's commonly known, at least for many, I think, that anything becomes the truth if you repeat it long enough times from enough sources. That becomes the truth and a fact in itself, irrespective of whether or not it's actually it's true. true. <laughs> it seems to be true enough that it makes itself true and uh, everyone around who's a part of the group, who wants to be a part of the group or who is uh, feeling like a part of the group, they, they defend whatever it is, no matter what it is, without bothering to check. So, a couple of days, I don't, we don't know how many days actually, my Facebook page was impossible to log into. I couldn't post anything. Um, I couldn't even go inside and look at anything. And the last thing I posted on there was, if you want to hear everything that I can't post here, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> go over to ineliabenz.com and subscribe to my newsletter. That That's fun. what I said, right? <laughs> and that was the last post that I was able to post. And it took a few days and Daniela finally figured, you know, sorted it out and managed to get it activated again. But my goodness. I They're mean... sensitive, aren't they? I know. It's like you, don't you even can't use even... Facebook. I don't even use it very much. Well, I just use it to share information and things and keep people on the loop. But it's like you even censored from saying... Go to my website if you want to hear what else I have to say. Yeah. Right? I mean, why censor that? It's incredible. We were just talking about Dr. Judy... Judy Mikovits. Mikovits. Yeah. And how her interviews and her videos just get deleted and over and over and over again. I mean, it's almost comical. It, it's kind of like a, a funny thing. We watched a video she'd done a month or so ago, a month and a half. And it was a couple hour interview with a doctor, another doctor, a PhD type doctor. She was very, very um, conversant in the language. And it was almost difficult to listen to and understand because they were speaking in doctor, you know, yeah, <laughs> in PhD speaking. doctor biology level. And, yeah. and you're trying to suss out what exactly are they saying about this and that and the other. But, you know, you can get the gist in us. It was brilliant, and it was a side of the story that it's kind of one of those things. Your gut knew from the start, for some of us at least, there's something not correct about this. And when you finally sort out what it is that's not correct about it, and you hear it repeated by a source that studied and knows uh, the biology and the physical physiology and the medical stuff, they know and they worked there, and they were in it when it was happening, and they could share their knowing of what's going on and it matches your total certainty, your inside knowing certainty. Then you're like, oh, thank you. It's nice to get confirmation, you know, confirmation hmm, for something that you know, even though you can't prove it. Because I'm not a PhD scientist, biologist, doctor. And neither are you, huh? Yeah, I'm not, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't take a PhD level research medical doctor to figure out this isn't exactly right, right. something <laughs> yeah. isn't correct with what's being shared here and I don't know exactly what it is but I know something's not right now I'm going to find out by doing my research and using the tools that I have to truth things 
as an adult. As an adult, yes. So if somebody from the government tells me they're here to help me, you know, I already start with a little bit of skepticism because, yeah, okay, sounds good. Let's see how much help you got here. But if their help is to lock me away and tell me what I can't do and tell me what I can't listen to and what I shouldn't, shouldn't believe and to give me contradictory information and to scare me into death, I don't think that's helping me. So, I don't know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, so it was really interesting to see how all her videos got deleted from everywhere. Um, and the people who had channels who interviewed her or posted her videos, they got deleted too. Yeah. But they couldn't stop it. And now she's, you know, she's in more and more. She's going viral, right? Yeah, she's going totally viral now. She did a movie, Plandemic. A Plandemic movie. And the boy who did the Plandemic movie with her, he was... Uh, as soon as you can post it, it's cancelled, it's deleted, it's hidden, it's withdrawn. Here I can't see that. It's amazing how quick that is. And then the same thing would happen to David Icke. Oh yeah, David Icke, yeah. Absolutely. He did a nice three hour interview. He said a bunch he of did. the same stuff that Judy has been saying. I think he probably must have listened to some of her stuff too, right? Yeah. Probably. I mean he does his research. He does his research too. He re right? He's a researcher. I mean Originally, that's what he was, right? He was uh, um, um, uh, a journalist. After he was in sports, he went into journalism. Yeah. So, and he researches his stuff. He doesn't just speak out of beliefs or things and thoughts. He literally goes out and researches. Right, and if you remember when he first came out, you were watching. Watching oh, him, that was yeah. in the whatever. 80s I think it was or the something. 80s, yeah, it was. I was watching. He was a soccer player or a newscaster. He's yeah. a pretty famous boy in England, of course. We didn't know him here in the good old US of A. <laughs> but it was like refreshing. Refreshing to hear what you knew to be true being said by somebody on the TV. It's like, finally. What? Yeah. So the story goes like this um, I was living in England at the time where I grew up. And I had the TV on. Um, I think I already had one or two children, maybe. I don't remember. Maybe one. Or maybe I was pregnant. I don't remember. But it was the 1980s. <laughs> and um, there was this newscaster. I think he was a sports newscaster. Um, David Icke. Uh, he was very popular in England. And somebody was watching the TV, listening to him. And then suddenly I started hearing what he was saying and he was like, like awakened, you know, <laughs> this guy was awake and he was talking about being awake and what he was seeing as an awakened person and how the world behaves and what the world is like. And I just, I can't remember, I think I was carrying something, it dropped, you know, <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> oh my God. I was so happy because I was been waiting for that day my entire life. All right. I was only 19 at the Still time. Still was a long time. <laughs> Still was a very long time to hear this. And it was in the TV, you know? And somebody was actually saying these things that I knew were true. I knew he was telling the truth and they were, it was accurate. It was very, very accurate. It was amazing. And I was so happy and I started like following him, you know, I wanted to know what he was up to and everything else. And I can't remember, remember how many months later or how many years later, but from one day to the next, he goes off on a trip. I think it was Peru or somewhere like that. And then when he comes back, he, I, when I heard him talk, I thought, uh oh, <laughs> oh no, you know, he's had an ego crash this boy is in trouble because he started talking about the Godhead and all sorts of things about the Godhead and this and the other and Ascension and Godheads and I'm like no don't do that don't, you don't have to do that you're gonna get destroyed man it's awful and I hoped against hope that he would Stop recover <laughs> yeah that he would recover that he would put his personality back together again and well, stop talking about being the Godhead you know Maybe you can stop, pause for a second and explain what it means, an ego crash. Okay. And how you repair it. Right. So, I've seen plenty of ego crashes in my life. People do have them uh, when they hang out with me for a while. 
Um, but it can happen very spontaneously. The very first time that I saw one was, again, I was like 18 um, and um, I was engaged to be married. And my fiance, well, that's with my first husband, he was, you know, he was a Roman Catholic and he was ex-military um, and very highly, highly intelligent. He was really, really intelligent. Um, and one day we were talking about reality and I said to him, well, solidity, you know, is, is not really solid. I can't remember the exact conversation, but he went something like this. So it's, reality is not really solid. And he says, of course it is. Look, everything's solid. I said, no, no, no. Um, everything's made of atoms, right? And he said, yes. Do you know what atoms are made of? Yeah, he said, electrons and neutrons and, you know. And I said, what, what's between the electrons and neutrons? I don't know. He said, it's space. I said, 99.99, I can't remember. I yeah, actually knew the percentage. To, yeah, it's quite quite close to 100%. Yeah, it's just very, very close to 100%. Very tiniest bit of anything. Yeah. I said, all that is space. It's not solidity at all. And actually, electrons and neutrons and all these. And people actually don't know what they are. There might be a little bit of a spark of energy or a wave. They don't actually know what it is. But they it's they not actually it solid. They don't know where it is and how fast it's exactly. going. Exactly. And that just blew his mind. He actually looked at me. I saw his eyes going weird, <laughs> like his fully dilated pupils. And he fell like backwards into the chair. And we had to call the doctor. My God. <clears throat> he was completely freaked out. And his reality just smashed into pieces. He, it took him I about a week or two or yeah, months, I think, he was before... intelligent enough to be able to put together the fact that everything was made out of nothing completely collapsed his entire reality. It did. And it was a very well-solid reality that it was he had a, constructed. He did have a very solid reality, and, and then it was gone. completely yanked from out from under him. Yeah. You just destroyed the entire world for him. <laughs> yes, basically. So he he had, actually said that. <laughs> he had nothing to do but plop down on the chair... And roll his eyes back and just call it over with. Yeah. And he was in a bad, bad state. I had to get him to the doctor. Uh, he was sedated. Uh, it was bad. It wasn't good. <laughs> Did you tell the doctor what you told him or was it dangerous to tell the doctor that? I don't even remember. <laughs> we just wanted It could him. be there might be information you shouldn't share with people. <laughs> Maybe there is a thing to be said about this censoring stuff. <laughs> There you go, because <laughs> it shatters egos. <laughs> Anyways. But anyway, so, and I've seen it lots of other times when a person starts doubting themselves and doubting that they exist or doubting that anything about them, whatever, or me or the planet or the universe, you know, and they just stop functioning as a person. It's really hard for them to even identify. It's almost like they lose their identity. And they go into extreme fear. Okay, that's why it's an, you know when it's an ego crush because they go into fear. Um, or they go into, like, they can't explain reality at all. And they give all these, give their power away to God or or Gaia or someone else. Or and then Godhead. They, the Godhead, <laughs> yeah. And then they are the Godhead. And they don't know the division, you know, the separation. They, they just can't, can't explain it. They just can't function as a person anymore. Their singularity is um, deleted? Their singularity gets Resolved, wobbly. Yeah. Wobbled. wobbled. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, David Ike, oh no, please, not you. You're the only person on this planet who's talking about these things in the Western world, and now you? No, don't do that. Anyways, um, eventually I thought to myself, no, no, I think he'll get better. I think he's going to recover and he's going to be just fine. I hope. I hate. I think, but I hope too, right? Yes. I really hope he does. He was my last hope. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I can't remember how long after that then he started talking. He he stopped talking about the Godhead, thank goodness. And then he started talking about other things, about social, you know, so social systems and 
the reptilians and queen, queen and, and all these Agendas. type of things. Agendas, there's child abuse around the planet and all these type of things. And I scanned, I scanned and truthed um, what he was saying. And I would say 80% or 75% of it is actual. It's actual, it's not just truth or like probable, but actual. So I was like very impressed with him. Um, the other thing that I really love about him is that it doesn't matter what people say about him. I mean, after he went <laughs> Godhead, yeah. oh my God, he was destroyed in the UK media, destroyed, completely destroyed. I, I saw a new, the, the first interview that this guy, I can't remember his name now, um, an Irish um, interviewer, completely destroyed him, man. It was awful, awful to watch. But anyways, eventually he started coming back and I was so happy, you know? So nowadays, he's got information. He's got accurate, accurate information. Um, and it's really worth listening to him. One of the things to avoid, and I know he's also doing it for many years. Um, I, although I love him and I love that he's has the capacity and ability and is able to speak his truth and everything else. For many years, I wouldn't listen to him much, although a little bit, just to catch up, because I love the guy. Um, he went into the victim-aggressor energy big time, and that's such, such a disempowering energy. And that's why I kind of limited my exposure to him, because I'm not into the victim-aggressor energy cycles at all. And I was really pleased to hear, I haven't actually listened to it yet, but the, the past few interviews that he's done, allegedly, that I've been told, that the thing he says at the end of it um, is that we have to realize that we're not victims, right? So we are creating this. So that was really refreshing. I was really happy to hear that he's saying that these days, but still censoring, right? Truthing, I said that I would truth his stuff, right? And I would want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, but can you finish the part about if you um, notice someone has an ego crash or they're experiencing something like an uh, ego crash like that, how might, how might they reassemble themselves a little bit? Um, so... Be a good practice too. Yeah, I, I think that when if that happens or you know if you're in the middle of it there's nothing I can do to say or because the person won't listen yeah, that's the problem that's the problem <laughs> but if you know somebody uh, or you're in a situation where you've seen this happen or you're treating people who are going through it or living with them lots of rest like they have to sleep so Whatever you can do to facilitate sleep, uh, plenty of water, like very well hydrated, make sure they eat, and then just allow, hold space for them in a very, very safe, you know, you have to walk on eggshells here. This is one of the healthy times when you need to walk on eggshells around them. Allow themselves to start putting back the pieces one of the things you can do is to norm make it like uh, normalize the environment, have a very strict routine. Breakfast at the same time, lunch at the same time, dinner at the same time, bedtime at the same time every day. Like that routine seems to anchor people really, really well. And to encourage individuals when, to ground, you know, it's like when they're standing up to really feel the heaviness of their feet, um, even barefoot on the grass that's a really really good one if you're sitting down to really feel the weight of your bottom on the chair like you can wiggle your butt, butt you know to make sure it's nicely nested and then feel the weight of the bottom you know against the chair it's really funny little things but they start helping and then if they're able to, because it's an ego crash, to do the ego healing um, exercise from the Ascension 101 course, that is surprisingly helpful, actually. So 
The ego reacts against its reality being deconstructed. The ego is very afraid of being deleted and there's a ton of false information out there that you have to remove the ego, destroy the ego and all these things which is completely irrational and wrong. You don't destroy the ego, you make it healthy. The human collective right now in the Western world has destroyed the ego and it's all... I mean, anybody who wonders if people like them, for example, that's a, a, a injured ego. Anybody who feels like people have to... They have to be the center of everybody's lives, that's it, and an injured ego. So anyways, that's a few little things that you can do if you see somebody in that situation. What about the one where you pick up an object and name it? Oh yeah. If you're in the middle of a crisis, or the person is in the middle of that crisis, then you let them touch something or hold something and use, like for example, a bottle of water, right? I have one here in front of me. I would hold it and say, I am touching a bottle of water right now and it feels smooth to my hands, cold to the touch. It's plastic, it's got a green top, it's see-through, the bottle is light blue, right? So, and then another one, right? So it's like, okay, I've done that one. I'm touching the car now, I'm touching the, the roof of the car. It's, it's kind of velvety, not velvety, it's kind of roughy. Uh, it's fabric and it's gray. I'm touching it, I'm touching this roof of the car. So it's like, you bring yourself back into contact with your physical body. I see. So, yeah. Okay, back to truthing now. Back to truthing. So, so listen to David Icke. And yes. He, yeah. He gets his talk up with a million people listening. Yeah. And the London Real Boy yeah. is so excited. It's the most people that has been watching anything except for on his day. There was only one guy who had more people watching something. Happened to be the guy who just gave you a check. Oh, yeah, I got a check from <laughs> President Trump. Thank you, Trumpy, for sending me a check. It's actually his name on the check, too. He signed it, that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh... And before you log out because you think I'm a Trump supporter, I'm not a supporter of any politician <laughs> because it, they are irrelevant. But... It doesn't matter who gets elected because they're going to do the same job that is told of them to do. You're not voting a president in to office. You're giving your power away to the government. When you vote, the presidents are chosen before you even vote. Anyways, so no, I'm not into politics. I don't support any politician at all. Okay. Anyways. But well, we will take his check. Well, yeah, I'm going to take his check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I don't know, because I think all these checks are going out to make people really dependent financially of the government. I think it's a very bad idea. Helicopter money? Yeah. Or um, basic income? I think that we need to figure this out. You I know, to... Because what I think was is coming is... Yeah, you can get your basic income as long as you're vaccinated. That's what I think is coming. And then all these people are going to be dependent on these, this money and not have any type of, you know, work or capacity to even take care of work. So, yeah, making them even more and more dependent, just like a child. Make them dependent and then threaten to take it away unless they do something you want them to do. Exactly, that's what I think. Yeah, that can So he can give me all the money he wants, but I'm, he can stop it too. He, he can stop any time. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to sell my soul for a vaccine. For another check. <laughs> for another check, yeah. No, me either, but... So anyways, anyways we're talking about truth thing. We're talking about truth thing a little bit, yeah. yeah. So David Icke had his thing, and uh, within a half hour of them finishing their call, all the YouTubes got wiped, even David Icke's YouTube channel with like millions of subscribers, his has got wiped off too. And the Facebook pages and uh, Vimeo pages and all of them, you know? What does that have to do with truth? Well, why was it wiped? Was there too much truth in there or there was not enough truth in there? <laughs> yeah, so 
How will you find By it? taking away people's authority to truth their own information, you're creating a society that is very immature dependent. and highly dependent and highly manageable and manipulated. Like you can, you're able to manipulate this nation very easily when it gives their power away like that. So when I said I listened to his stuff and I would truth it, basically, it's a methodology, it's a method. Um, there's lots of other methods too. You probably heard of um, muscle testing. That's a truthing method. You can use um, pendulums. You can use all sorts of things. But I use something that I call resonance dissonance. And, um, and I'd like to qualify that by saying that it's not exactly if something feels right. That's not what I'm talking about. And the reason why you don't listen to something if it feels right or it feels wrong is because it's very possible that, for example, if you're in a day that you're in a low frequency state, say something happened, you're very sad, you're very low frequency that moment, and you start truthing something. And if that truthing, if there's something that you're touching or the, the thing that you want to get information about, whether it's good for you or bad for you, um, it's also low frequency, it's gonna be resonant because you're in, low, in a low frequency state at that moment. So it's gonna be resonant, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's like, you're really, really depressed and you're maybe a recovering alcoholic and you touch a beer and say, is this gonna be good for me? Oh yes, that will be good for you. you yeah, know, it's mostly. gonna feel really good and That'll resonant. Feel really good. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's not good for you. <laughs> so that's what I mean. It's it's not just resonance dissonance, okay? Um, there's a little bit more involved, and I'm doing a class or on it on the ibensacademy.com. Um, this class is going to go out probably in two weeks from today. Um, Hopefully in one week, <laughs> we're gonna do our best to do it in one week. But it's more likely to be two weeks because we're also hosting a summit uh, worldwide. And um, that's gonna take us a, a whole week of time. So yeah, so that's gonna come out. And then with those tools, with that information, that tool, you will be able to be able to truth things yourself and be able to trust the knowledge that you decide is true because it also teaches you how to be so accurate that you're able to know when to trust a yes and trust a no that comes through using these tools and to, you know get more information about it because it could be partially true it could be true in a certain state of being it could be true in a non-physical it could be true in the physical but it's not true in both. That's right. So, for example, let's just do one tiny little example, okay? okay? So if I said, um, I heard a story about a man who saw a UFO at the Olympic Peninsula. Is this true? And it will come out, yes. And I go, oh yeah, it happened. No, no, it didn't. The story and the fact that I heard it is true. And uh, the story exists. Okay. But there wasn't a UFO. But there wasn't a UFO, and the fact that I heard it is also true. Right? So that's why we have to be really careful, and I'm going to teach you how to do that, how, how to, to figure it out. Right? Yeah, how to deconstruct the, the wording and the question in order to make it really, really accurate. Sometimes we get a yes, no, yeah. right? And those are annoying because <laughs> they say, okay, so I heard about this guy who was in the peninsula, Olympic Peninsula, and he saw a UFO. Is this true? Yes, yes you no. Heard about it. Oh, it's yes. Not true. Right. Yes, no. Well, what part's true? Exactly, not? right? So I get yes, no. Oh, okay. So did I hear about it? Yes. Okay, good. Was there a man in the Olympic Peninsula? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did, did anybody, male of this male sex, saw a UFO in the Olympic Peninsula? Yes. No. Oh, okay, that's confusing. 
Oh, when I was saying that, I was actually thinking about this guy, but I asked a question about a man. So, okay. So, did a man called XYZ see a UFO in the Olympic Peninsula last Tuesday at three o'clock? No. No. <laughs> right? Because, yeah, lots of he men have seen it. But yeah. No, he didn't see, see, it. see it. He just made it up. So lots of men had seen UFOs in the Olympic Peninsula. Oh, yes. That's why I got yes, no on that one, because I didn't specify which one and when. So, yeah, that's an example of truthing. So when you read a book, when you hear an article, uh, I mean, I mean Fables, an interview, story, uh, legend. stories, legends, uh, especially like ancient legends, you know, the Native American teachings, um, and all the, 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 the spoken, you know, the spoken knowledge, and even the written knowledge as well, truth it. And you can do it. You can learn to do it real fast. You can be reading an article and listening, listening, listening to your body tell you, yes, 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 no, no, yes, no, yes, yes, you know. And it's really fascinating what you can gather from that information. But yeah, it takes practice. Practice makes perfect. It's not overnight. It's not going to happen the first time you do it. <laughs> That's something people always forget to. I'm not good at it. I've tried it twice, you know. It doesn't work that way. So censoring, not on man. I mean, I also, like Larry mentioned, I believe that censoring and controlling criminal activities like um, child abuse, uh, pornography, and pedophilia, and slavery, um, all these things. Basic human rights. The basic human rights, you know, that's really important for us all to protect that and not to allow those type of things to come out and be like, quote, normal, unquote, because they're not. But when it comes to different viewpoints of how to take care of your physical body and your health, that's one of our human rights. The right to say no, you know? That's not just for women about sex, that's all of us, men and women, we have a right to say no to medical treatments that we don't want in our bodies. We have, and our bodies are ours. Nobody else should have power over our bodies. No one. So the right to say no is all of ours. Men, women, and children have the right to say no over what happens to their physical bodies. Remember that. Because that is being taken away and it's, we mustn't let it. I agree. But if somebody wants to make a movie about a flat earth or a round earth, go right ahead. Honey, the earth is square. It's fine. I'm happy with a square earth too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> No, joking aside though, the earth is not round or flat or square. It's like a honeycomb. Okay. <laughs> honeycomb earth. The honeycomb yeah. earth theory. Yeah. It looks this way, but it is this way. Mm -hmm. oh. There you go. There you go. So anyways, boys and girls, if you want to make sure that you stay in touch with me and you know what I'm releasing, all the information I'm giving out and everything, Go to ineliabenz.com, subscribe to my newsletter there, okay? You want to hang out with me, chat, and chill, and discuss all these things in great detail? Go to walkwithmenow.com. That's where I hang out, not on Facebook. <laughs> and if you want to be studious, learn the Ibenz method, get tools and tips, and knowledge in your newsletter and subscribe to and get into and buy the courses go to ibensacademy.com that's all the locations where you're gonna find me Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah and i do have a youtube channel okay. hopefully that won't get deleted <laughs> what do you think just be careful not to talk too much truth oh and i'm not going to be careful but i'm going to do it in my site so if you want to know what i'm talking about uh you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah 
Oh, and my podcasts, of course. But you know about that one, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this one. All right, boys and girls, we'll talk to you soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye.